Hey, what's up? Welcome back to another video right here on Free Will Photos. Today, we're going to be editing a photo of some buildings and using some of the AI tools to make selections. So let's go ahead and just jump right in. Here we are inside of On One Photo Raw. And as you can see, we have a photo of a building. Now, first step is Brilliance AI. That's like the first thing that I do on all of my images, uh, except for this time, I'm not liking exactly what's happening here. So what I wanna do is probably bring down the exposure just a touch. I wanna push the mids. And then I'm also going to pull down on the blacks. Now, what I'm going for is a contrasty look. Uh, ultimately, I'm going to turn this to a black and white, but uh, I want to get a good base before I send the black and white preset or filter onto this image. And then I'm going to play around with the hay slider. Uh, pulling this down may bring back some of that information uh, in the photo. So here's what we started with. It's a little flat, not as interesting to look at. And here is where we have gotten so far. Now I am going to actually throw in just a hint of vibrance and maybe even some saturation. I don't think this is going to make a huge difference uh, for the black and white, but I like to give a little bit more color information in the raw image before I throw it into the filter. Uh, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. And I'm going to leave on one standard as the camera profile for this particular edit. So we'll go ahead and close that down and we're going to jump over to effects. All right. In effects, what I want to do is apply dynamic contrast. And here is where we're actually going to start using some of that AI masking. So what I'm going to do is click on the mask icon here and then come over to the properties. And we're going to click on where it says region and I'm going to select architecture. All right. Does a really good job at selecting the buildings, at least what I want. And I want the dynamic contrast to paint in on those areas. So I'm going to select that and then I'm going to click apply. And so we're going to let on one do its thing. It is now applied the dynamic contrast to the buildings. If I turn this off and turn it on, you can see that it's there. If I hit the letter O, we can take a look at what the mask looks like. Now, is it perfect? Absolutely not. But does it get us where we need to go for the overall look of the image? I think the answer is yes. And that's, you know, kind of the goal of using the AI mask to get you 90 to 95% of the way there. Now, like I said, most of the time whenever I use an AI mask, I typically always pull up on the feather. So we'll hit the letter O just to take a look at our mask. I think it did a pretty good job at smoothing out those edges. So I'm just gonna push this a little bit. And it's also dynamic contrast, so it's not like it's one of those presets or filters that just heavily uh, distorts the image, all right? It just adds in a little bit more information, uh, local contrast to make the image pop a little bit better. That's all that we're really doing here. Now it's time to make the thing happen. All right, we're going to come over here to our black and white filter and I'm going to actually use a preset. Um, I think high key is going to work quite well uh, for this image. So we'll do that. And then I'm just going to bring down the brightness of this probably to about here. I think that's pretty good. All right. And then uh, let's see what happens, or I'm going to actually use the detail slider a little bit later. I'm going to, you know, we'll do it right now. So we'll go add filter and then we're going to add a tone enhancer. And I like to separate this and I just enjoy using the detail slider as opposed to using the detail slider in the black and white filter. I use the detail slider inside of the tone enhancer when I want to mask this in selectively. So I'm just going to crank this up like so. And I think that looks good. I don't like what's happening to the building over here, but I do like what's happening here in the middle. And let me turn this off and on just to see. Yeah, I like what's happening with the buildings here in the middle. All right. Maybe pull down on the highlights as well. Get some of that information back. And maybe even pull down on the shadows. Yeah, there we go. Now we're like really getting somewhere. 
and I'm only focused on putting this into these buildings right here. So I'm going to click on the mask icon again and then come over to the masking and I'm going to select architecture one more time. This time I want to paint in again and then I'm going to hit apply. Now what I'm going to do is clean up this mask. So I'll hit the letter O and since I know I only want this effect from the tone enhancer on these center buildings, I'm just going to go ahead and make a big brush here and make sure that my flow is up to hundred uh, percent because I do change that from time to time. And then I'm just going to go ahead and erase all of this from the mask. So that way I don't have to worry about it. Uh, let me see what this little building is here. Uh, I'll leave it for now. We'll see how it, everything goes. Do I want to modify any? I'll leave that as well. And honestly, I think this over here is okay as well. It's not really doing much of anything. So I'll leave that alone. I just knew that I didn't really care for what was happening on that building over there. So now that I have my... Uh, black and white tone enhancer dynamic contrast here is the image that we came into on one with and here is the final or not the final version because I'm not done yet uh, here is the image that we have so far and I think it's working out quite well now for whatever reason today I decided I want to try sky replacements so I went ahead and unhid my sky tab and we're going to go ahead and click on here and let on one think itself through and we're going to replace the sky i feel like the sky is a big portion of this image and it's kind of lame so i'm just going to go ahead and click on clouds because i feel like i want clouds in this particular image uh, now the model is going over the building i'm not a huge fan of that so what i'm going to do is click on model B and let's see if that does something a little bit better. Hopefully it does. Uh, and if it doesn't, then we'll start with our masking tools. Okay, so it looks like the masking has been completed with model B. Let's take a look at it. As you can see, it's going over the top portion of the building just because it's really really small up there and you know AI masking probably is going to struggle so one of the things that I like to use which I already have selected is the brush tool with the perfect brush all right now the reason why I like this is it allows me to make selections uh, and kind of only paint in the lines all right so Think of this as like in Photoshop when you make a selection around an item and then you start to paint in that area. You can't paint outside of the lines. It's similar to that. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is just go ahead and erase all of this. I'm on erase, as you can see, and I'm just painting over those areas. All right. Now I'm going to turn the mask off or at least the overlay so that way I can see what's happening here on the building in real time as I paint this away. Uh, but you can see, you know, on one, it thought this was the right area uh, because it's just really, really bright up here. But obviously I don't want this to have the sky on it. Um, even though it probably would have been reflecting I don't want the sky overlay on here. So I'm just going to paint this away. And, you know, you could really take your time, make this really, really perfect. But this is a quick edit. And I just kind of wanted to showcase what I'm doing here. Um, not so much uh, make this a tutorial on editing, you know, with mask and stuff like that. But I'm going to hit Command R and make my brush size a little bit smaller. I'm just going to even out some of these areas that definitely need it. Because the, the thing about the perfect brush is it does leave some um, trace of the edges. Um, and I don't know if I'm saying that right. I'm 
trying to paint and focus and talk at the same time. It's like trying to chew bubble gum and walk at the same time. I promise I could do that. Painting and talking, that is a whole different challenge. So forgive me as I uh, kind of hone in and focus on finishing up this, this paint job. And I feel like I need to get some of this off as well. And this is probably a good, a good place for the perfect brush. And you could see, you know, how you could go and fix all of this. So again, it's a quick edit. I'm not going to try and make this uh, perfect, but mm -hmm. I will clean this up because that's going to bug me. I'll leave it alone. So let's go ahead and hit command zero. So we're not like crazy deep into the pixel peeping uh, territory. And you can see that it's doing a little bit better job. All right. But good enough for what I wanted it to do. And then I'm just going to take the sky and darken it. And then we're going to change the preset of the sky. And we'll go with 27. I think that one. Yeah. I just wanted something that would uh go around the building here and maybe we'll scale it up just a touch and then the blur amount we'll just blur it a little bit not a whole lot maybe to about there yeah uh, Everything else seems to be in focus. There may be too much blur. Yeah. But I think this is just a fun, fun edit. So let's go ahead and do my final thing, which if you already have been hanging around, you know that that's going to be a vignette. And that is always using the local adjustment tool. And I'm going to grab the gradient mask and I'm just going to use the vignette preset here. Click right there in the center. And I'm actually going to pull this in really, really tight this time and then just pull that out. And I feel like that is a good overall look for this image. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. You know what? I'm going to try something else. I've never really done this before, but I feel like maybe this could work. So what I'm going to do is grab a solid color and I'm going to make it black and I'm going to put this underneath my image layer. And then I'm going to grab the layer mask for the image I'm going to grab the vignette tool and I'm going to put this right into the center and I'm going to invert this so let's go there yeah and then I'm just gonna pull this in rotate it around like so and then I'm just gonna fade this out and you know that gives like a a little bit of a, a border let me zoom this out and then I'll fade it a little bit more like that and then so it just gives it in my opinion a little bit of uh, like I don't know gives it something maybe pull the density back so it's not as much but it's just adding in black to the background because essentially I'm making it transparent all the way around here and what we're seeing is the background um, and what I might be able to do and again I'm experimenting here because this is just what I do inside of on one I experiment with things we're gonna go ahead and click on there and I'm gonna go with paint with color and this is actually kind of cool. I'm going to go ahead and add in something that's kind of like a silver tone. And this is on the background. So it's not on the image itself. 
And then what I'll do is make it small right there in the center and then kind of just fade it out. So it's like a, a spotlight, spotlight almost. And then we'll come back to this mask. We'll go with a higher density. And then let's fix the actual mask itself. Let's just pull you in. Or no, we'll pull this one out. Yeah, and then we'll pull that in, just touch. do something like that and then what we can do is grab our brush tool and I wonder if yeah we'll grab a cloud brush and we'll make it a bigger size again I'm experimenting here I have never done this before, so I don't know what this is going to do. Uh, where are we at? Where I want to erase. So we'll click. Is my flow at 100? Yeah. And what I'm really trying to do here is just add in like a little bit of a fade, but I don't think that that's working the way that I thought it was going to work. So what we're going to do is come back to masking. We will reset that mask and we'll just go with what we had because I think that that worked well. And we'll just fade it out to the edges. And then on the backdrop, maybe turn off that local adjustment or, or it's really strong. So we'll just pull it down and maybe that will work. I don't know. I'm just having fun. So hopefully you found some value in my wild goose chase there uh, to see if I could do something that would be just a little bit more different than what I normally do. And again, that's how I explore an on one. Uh, I just try things because I like to have fun and see what I can do. So there you have it. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section. Like always, if you want to help this channel, consider using my coupon code FREEWILLPHOTOS20 whenever you shop over at the On One store. I make a small commission. You save some money. It's a win win. And I appreciate everyone who uses it. Until next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.